Good morning and welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Andy Twyton, and on behalf of Trinity Lutheran Church, I want to welcome everyone who's joining us for worship. Whether you're a longtime member or a first-time visitor, it is so good to have you with us. Just a few brief announcements before we begin. First of all, there is no Trinity Walking Group today, but the following Sunday, May 23rd, there will be a Trinity Walking Group meeting at the Starkweather Creek Bike Path near Chad and Erica Nelson's house. There's information about that in our bulletin email. Uh, if you are curious about that walking group, please contact the church office. And again, this week, I just wanted to thank you for your ongoing prayers for my wife, Kristen. Uh, she remains in the hospital with a possible surgery this week. So I appreciate all the concern and support and prayers that uh, we have been receiving. Thank you so much for that. It is so good to be with you this morning. Welcome to worship. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cool cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, 
you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us in your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Acts, chapter 1. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. The second lesson is from the first book of John, chapter 5. If we receive human testimony... The testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in the truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you from the Living One. Amen. There are times in life when all we can do is pray. I'm thinking of those moments when our sense of control or our illusion of control falls apart. That can be a tough pill to swallow for those of us who are used to fixing problems or who understand ourselves to be masters of our fate and captains of our souls. But I think most of us have experienced moments like these when all we can do is pray, Oh God, help me. Oh please God, save me or save my loved one. And in those moments, what a source of comfort and strength it is to be placed within a community of prayer. Trinity is a community of prayer. We hold one another in prayer in times of need. I know sometimes it can feel like the list we read each week in our prayers gets to be too long. But what a gift it is to each one of those individuals and their families to overhear their church family praying for them. Maybe you find yourself saying to others, you are in my prayers, or I'm praying for you, or I will keep you in my prayers. Maybe you have a prayer practice where you keep a list of those for whom you're praying, or maybe you just Offer a prayer simply in the moment. However it happens, there is power in being in a community of prayer. I may not always be able to understand it or explain it, and we might never do it perfectly. But what a gift it is to be held in prayer by others. In our gospel reading today, we overhear Jesus' prayer to God the Father. For the past several weeks, we've been working our way through Jesus' farewell discourse in John's Gospel. That would be John chapters 13 through 17. The farewell discourse is Jesus' long speech on the night before his death. This would be his final night with his disciples, the night where he would be betrayed and arrested and taken for trial before his death. Jesus' farewell begins with a symbolic act 
he washes his disciples' feet. And then he teaches them about loving as he has loved them for the next couple of chapters. He teaches them about unity. He tells them about the coming of the Spirit. And then this farewell discourse ends with a lengthy prayer that lasts for all of John 17, and we read just a portion of it today. This lengthy prayer is sometimes called Jesus' high priestly prayer. One of the remarkable things about Jesus' prayer in John 17 is that we get to overhear Jesus praying for us. He prays for his disciples in these verses, but there is also this remarkable sense that he is praying for everyone, every one of his followers who will come after those first disciples. In other words, Jesus holds Trinity Lutheran Church in prayer today. Jesus prays for you. In this prayer, Jesus prays for protection, for sanctification, that is, that the community might be kept holy, and for unity. Jesus prayed for his disciples that they would find joy in continuing his mission, and Jesus prayed that they would be rooted in relationship with him and with one another. I imagine that this prayer was a gift to the original audience of John's gospel. We don't know much about this early Christian community, but we do know that this was a community that faced significant hardship. This gospel was written after those early Christians were kicked out of their synagogues for their belief in Jesus. In an age of church shopping, this might not sound like that big of a deal, just go to the church down the street. But in the first century, to be kicked out of your faith community meant disconnection from your family, your friends, your communal network of support. It could be a threat to your economic livelihood. We know as well that this ostracized community faced division within their community as well. And so think of the power of Jesus' prayer. He prays for their protection in a hostile world. He prays that they would be one with each other in the midst of disunity. Jesus took this community and held them in his prayer. Likewise for us, we might not be facing the same problems as John's community, but our community has been through an, or an ordeal of its own. Thinking past these many long months, this more than one year, how we've been cut off from so much, familiar rituals and relationships. We have weathered difficulty and loneliness and loss and grief. Jesus holds all of that in his prayer today. In times of stress and change, there also comes disagreement and disunity. And I think about our divided culture how it can seem like we are stuck in our divisions. One side will always think this way, and the other side will always think that way. And those divisions have a way of working their way into the church. But we remember today that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus prayed that his followers, meaning us too, that they might be one. So much of this prayer has to do with Jesus' mission in the world. Remember in the first chapter of John, we heard, no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. And now in John 17, Jesus says that he has passed on everything he received from the Father to his followers. In other words, Jesus has completed the work that uh, John told us was going to be completed in the first chapter. Jesus made God known to them. Commentator William Loder notes, the focus here is not on information giving, but the establishment of a special relationship with God. In other words, to know God isn't just to know some stuff about God, but to know God in a relational way. The offer in that sense is not revelation, information or knowledge about, but relationship. 
like coming to know a person. In this relationship is life, eternal life, according to the Gospel of John. So Jesus was sent into the world to make God known. And now on this night, Jesus is praying for his followers because they are sent with that same mission. We see this throughout the Gospel of John. God chooses to work through mediators to make God known, to bring others into that relationship which leads to eternal life. The disciple Andrew, for example, brought his brother Peter to Jesus. Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus. The book of John, we are told at the end, is meant to bring the reader to Jesus, to mediate Jesus and through Jesus God to us. All of these follow the pattern of Jesus coming into the world, of being sent into the world to make the unseen God known to humanity. What I'm trying to get at here is that Jesus' prayer draws us into his mission of making God known to others, and not just in an informational way, but in a relational way. And Jesus knows that this mission is often dangerous. After all, he was crucified for it. And so Jesus prays for protection for his followers and for us in a world that can sometimes be hostile to God's ways. And Jesus knows that this is a team effort, that we need each other. Because what a gift it is to be part of a community of faith, a community drawn together by the prayer of Jesus. I can speak honestly and from experience about that gift of community at my life in this time. I am so grateful for your prayers, and I want you to know that you are in my prayers as well. But most importantly today, we are held in the prayer of Jesus. Before we even begin to pray for each other, Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is sending us out to be a community that makes God known in the world. And Jesus prays for our protection, for our holiness and witness in the world, and that we might be united with one another in that calling. My dear siblings, hear this good news. There is no escaping the prayer of Jesus. It goes before you, above you, behind you, within you. Our whole life is held within the prayer of Christ. We are Christ's special concern of prayer. The love of Jesus holds us together, makes us one with him and with God. And in that love, we are a witness to the world. We make God known, the God to whom we pray. Amen. i 
in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life. Forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need especially Clem, Jane, Todd, Bill, Joyce, William, Maxine, Myron, Denia, Galen, Donna, David, Chris, Judy, Charlotte, Judy, Karen, Leshmi, Dennis, Chad, Larry, Darlene, Michelle, Joan, Haley, Kristen, Bob, Megan, Randy, and all whom we name now aloud or silently.
Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take some time today to share the peace with one another. You can comment in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube. After the service, you can also pick up the phone or send a text, send an email, send a note. Find some way to share the peace of Christ with your church family today. For our offering, just a brief reminder of the ways that you can continue to support the mission and ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church. You can do so online on our website, tlcmsn.org and click on online giving. You can also do so by sending in your offering by mail to our mailing address, 1904 Winnebago Street. Thank you so much for your ongoing faithfulness and generosity.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unchanging skin.
May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.